Hey everybody, welcome into another episode of the Ken Reggett and Friends Show. I'm Mike Nicastro, and more importantly, that's Ken Reggett. We're brought to you by YinzerCrazy.com, the Yinzer Crazy YouTube series, and of course, 31 Sports Bar and Grill, where you can find all of your finest food in the Berg, some great beer specials. You got Penguins Hockey, March Madness, and Full Swing. So make sure you get out there at Bridgeville, check them out, say hi to Ken, and have an appetizer. Maybe on Ken. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna throw that at you. Ken, what's going on? Not too much. How are you doing, Mike? I'm good. I'm excited to have another great guest. Uh, we've had Hockey Hall of Famers, Joe Mullen. We've had GMs who've orchestrated great Penguins hockey in the last couple decades, and Craig Patrick. We got another Hall of Famer on the show today. How lucky are we? We're we're very lucky, and, and if uh, anybody's keeping uh, tally, that's all from the Pittsburgh Penguins as well. And that's the first couple of cups, and that's how good the team was to help build what uh, what they are today. And that was through a lot of hard effort by uh, you know Mario and the boys and the team and uh, ownership and get us where we are today. And we're very fortunate to be able to tap into some of that. Don't sell yourself short. No, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not at all. I'm, I'm right there at the end of the bench waiting to, waiting to talk to Larry. <laughs> yeah, we'll not keep it a secret any longer. It is former Penn's defenseman Larry Murphy. He's jumping on with us very shortly here. We'll obviously talk to him about his time with the Penguins and his time with the Red Wings. So let's do that. What do you say, Ken? The Pittsburgh Tribune Review called him the best to ever wear number 55 for the Pittsburgh Penguins. He spent the better part of five seasons and the black and gold here in the Berg. We're excited to have Larry Murphy on the Penguins Ken Reggett and Friends show. He's also a friend of Ken Reggett. And so I guess my first question, Larry, is why? Yeah, that's yeah, that, that's uh, what I ask myself all the time is what the <laughs> why. But I mean, obviously, Ken, Ken, well, I shouldn't say obviously, but Ken and I were good buddies and during the time that we were together in, in Pittsburgh. So we just, uh, we enjoyed each other's company, I guess you'd so to speak, and had quite a few laughs along the way. That was never a shortage of laughter. So yeah, it was a good time. And uh, you know, as, as we all know, Kenny's such a great guy that I, I don't know anybody that doesn't get along with him, but maybe there is. <laughs> Kenny, talk about some of those great times. If you can, keep it PG. Yeah. It, it's, all, it's all good. Uh, no, Larry, Larry was, uh, when I first came to Pittsburgh, it, and, and Larry obviously is a defenseman and, uh, you know, Hall of Famer, very special. And uh, for me coming to Pittsburgh and, and playing on basically an all-star team and uh, trying to find my footing and uh, working with uh, the defenseman and the team to get along, I, I, I specifically, Larry, remember this one time that we we're down, I'm going to say we we're down about three goals in the third period. I think it was 5-2, maybe even 5-3 uh, for the other team. I don't remember who it was with, when in Philly, I guess I should say. And uh, Larry came back, and he, Murphy came back, and he said, uh, can he stop the puck? He goes, she goes, Mario's coming back. We're going to win this game. And I, I remember looking at him. That was in the slot, the face off is off, off side circle, the neutral zone. I go, we're down three goals. There's like four minutes left. He goes, we're going to win the game. Don't lay more pucks in. Yeah. And I looked at him and I go, okay. <laughs> well, it was, yeah, that was funny. That was, that was an interesting time uh, for sure. And, and uh, as Kenny can attest to, but we had some, you know, we'd have some wild games where, uh, uh, you know, we would be down three or four goals and find our way back. But for, uh, you know, for, for, for Kenny and, and all the other goaltenders, <laughs> boy, they're left to hang out to dry yeah. on a number of occasions. Yeah. It was, you know, we were more than willing to trade chances with the opposition. So, yeah. you know, we'll give, we'll give you uh, eight great scoring chances as long as we can find our way to 12 on our side. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure that Kenny has talked on this on previous previous shows where uh boy there's times where he felt it was probably like a five on one and everybody on the pens was waiting at the red line to head the other direction so but yeah. that, that was the way it was i mean we had so much firepower we always figured we could just outscore the opposition and get some get some big saves from k in the third period would uh, be the difference yeah and, and mike let me jump in here if i may um and, and that's a difference like i came from philly to pittsburgh pittsburgh won the cup the year before and we, you know, when Larry was telling me to, you know, don't lay more goals and stop the puck, Mario's coming back. I, I remember playing as a kid and playing with guys through my career where 
when those things happen, the, there's players out there that are that that, that dominant that they can turn the, the the game around, and that's Mario, and that was the Penguins back in that era. What Larry was saying, and uh, to, to give them opportunity and have faith in, in coming down that I was soft the puck or the defense and Larry would be able to handle what's coming at them because they did take risks because they were that good and that was part of the game that a lot of teams don't see during the course of a even a, ser- a, a season because they don't have those players and that's what uh, Pittsburgh was back in 91-92 in and, and it was it was special. What Larry's saying is, is something how good also that the Pittsburgh Penguins were back in those years, right, Larry? Yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a case of uh, we always felt that, you know, we, if we had the puck more than the opposition uh, because of our skill level, we'd win more than we'd lose. And that was exactly the way it worked out. Of course, I mean, I might be exaggerating a bit where, like, it's, you know, we're all standing at the red line waiting. But it was, a, you know, we were willing, we had a, we were, we were willing to press. And that's, that's what made it so exciting, I think, for the fans in, in, in Pittsburgh. Not only was it a case of uh, – you know, uh, the, what the team winning, it was just a case how the team won. It was very exciting. And there was never, um, you know, there's nothing greater than a come from behind victory. And it's probably happened on many occasions uh, with our time in, in Pittsburgh. And that made for great, that made for great hockey. So it was, it was exciting time. You know, things of course tightened up after that, you know, we got, you know, uh, in the late nineties and, and you know, 2000s, you know, things really got, the game got tightened up a bit. And, and I miss, I, you know, I really loved those days where, uh, you know, it was a cha- It was just all about uh, high skill. You know, I, of course, everybody tried to play defense, but it was a case of, uh, there were a lot of wide open hockey. So it was, a, it was definitely a fun time. Now, I, I mean, maybe I'm speaking for Kenny. I don't know how much fun he thought it was, but, <laughs> but, uh, you know, because he'd be, as I said, he was in situations where, you know, he'd be seeing, he'd be seeing a lot of pucks and a lot of pressure to stop it. But Hey, for me, it was great. You know, you just, you know, you go, you go after the game, you look at the game sheet, you know, you'd be on the, you're on the ice for five goals for, and hopefully you're only on for three against you came out plus two, maybe a couple of points along with it. I mean, that's, that, for, for, I don't get how you looked at the, the uh, score sheet at that time. Yeah. No, I mean you could uh, you could win a game one nothing. That's great for everybody's stats, and if you're a goaltender, that's that's wonderful as well, obviously. But uh, if you look at the last game in '92, we beat the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, what, what was the score of that game? Six, seven, something. And and that's the thing with when you have a team with that much talent, uh, it, it it's it's win the game. It's win the yeah. game. That's it. It's personal stats have nothing to do with anything. It's it's a matter of playing together, playing as a team, playing your game. And win the game moving forward. And if you yeah. look at playoffs and Stanley Cup, that's that's what these guys helped teach me, reteach me, because we had some success. I did when I was a kid, but uh, being in the NHL, being in that position with these guys was uh, very, very special. It was, you yeah, know, I mean, I, I, I know maybe it's a bit of a we got into the playoffs, Kenny. Okay? We we did, you know, we there's you have to tighten up for to a degree for sure. But still, it was uh, I, our difference was our uh, you know the guys that we had up front that could score goals. Were, we had guys that could you know make those get those timely goals. I mean that was the success of the team. But it, yeah, I mean we we uh, you know the playoffs pressure cranked up and and you had to play things a little tighter. But still, I don't think at the cost of of you know guys like Lemieux or Francis or those guys were able to still perform you know offensively quite well. Yeah, Larry, obviously, it took a group effort. You're very accomplished yourself. Four-time Stanley Cup champion, Hockey Hall of Fame inductee in 2004. But I kind of want to take you back into the, the Wayback Machine, if you will. It's 1990, playing in Minnesota. Yeah. You hear you're getting traded to Pittsburgh. What's the, what's the gut reaction? What was swirling through your head at that time? Well, it was um, – uh... You know, I had no idea I was going to Pittsburgh at the time, and it was actually uh, it's just got, it just kind of speaks to what it's all about playing uh, playing in the National Hockey League. I I get uh, uh, I, I get the call. It, I'm actually uh, Minnesota played that night. I get the call. I, I went home for afternoon nap, uh, getting ready. You know, assuming I'm playing for Minnesota, I get a call from Bobby Clark, who was the general manager of Minnesota at the time. Said, "Hey, you know, you've been traded to you've been traded to Pittsburgh." Uh, they need defensemen. They you got to get on the plane like in two hours and, and fly and play and play that night. So I really? scramble, put together a couple of suitcases, and walk out the door. And 
I owned that house to lived in. And to this day, I have never laid eyes on that house again. It was like, it's for somebody, it's like, you know, you get a call at your house, say, okay, you've got to leave. Uh, just pack a couple suitcases. We'll get the rest of the stuff to you, but you're never going to see the house again. And that, that was the way it was, uh, you know, getting traded to uh, the Pittsburgh the day of, but I, I was, uh, you know, I was excited of course, because uh, you know, Pittsburgh was an up and coming team. And, and look, you look at the, uh, the lineup, you go, hey, this is going to be a lot of fun. This is a real, you know, puck possession team, which I love. And, and for me, it, it was a great opportunity, a great fit. And of course, uh, um, I think I, I think I got traded in January. Of course, then we go on. We went went on. We made the big deal for uh, for Ronnie Francis and Wolf Samuelson, and we went on to uh, to win the Stanley Cup. So yeah, career wise, it was a huge opportunity, but it, I, I didn't see it coming. And it's definitely it's upheaval anytime. I'm sure, Kenny can speak to getting traded anytime. It's just you know things change just like boom, one phone call and your life you're on a different track then. Kenny, did you have the same situation where you're borrowing socks and underwear from teammates because you got <laughs> shipped out so quickly and didn't have time to pack the suitcase in full? No, I I, I, I packed a full suitcase, but it wasn't <laughs> far from that. And uh, most guys, when it happens that late in the year, that's that's typically the case. And uh, you know, hockey hockey's hockey, and, and uh, you got to go where you got to go, when you got to go, yeah. and when they ask for you, and you got to do your job and uh, maybe clean underwear or second on that list sometimes. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> you got to make sure you're well stocked. You never know when the call is. <laughs> That's right. right. So. Well, I've been traded a few times, so uh, I mean, I've been to all different sorts of uh, circumstances getting traded. Uh, uh, when I got traded from Pittsburgh to Toronto, um, I found out I was the NHL draft. I was watching it on TV, and all of a sudden they said we got an announcement to make. And then, I, and I, of course, they announced the trade. And then, you know, I'm off to Toronto, but I find out by watching watching TV. So it was, uh, I mean, there's uh, one, I, my first time I got traded from L.A. to Washington, I was at an ACDC concert. And, and uh, <laughs> I was like row six. I don't know how oh, they found me. At that, it was before we had uh, had cell phones. It was early 80s. And all of a sudden, <laughs> some usher comes and taps me on the shoulder and says, hey, you've been traded. So, I mean, it's just. It's just funny how, uh, you know, how different it's just different ways that you find out about getting uh, getting traded. It's uh, one time. I mean, I, I, I'm, sorry, I'm going on and on, but I get traded from Washington to Minnesota. I get on, I, I, I know I'm getting traded that day and the trade deadline is three o'clock. So I'm sitting we're in Montreal for practice. The practice starts at three. So I go, oh, I guess I got to put my equipment on. I still know because you find out sometimes a couple minutes after three. Well, that's what happened in this case. I put my equipment on. I race out in the ice and I get about half a lap. And then Brian Murray was the coach and he gives me the big wave over. And I knew, okay, yeah, I'm gone. So I come over, he says, yeah, you're, you're off to uh, Minnesota. So anyways, sorry, I, I, I digress. Oh, but yeah, it's, it's just the way it is in the National Hockey League. No, we love hearing it. You didn't have to leave the ACDC concert before they played Thunderstruck, though. Right? Oh, I, yeah, no, back in black. No, not, I actually, I did stay. I did stay for that. I figured, hey. I, you know, I'm not leaving. What's the point of leaving? So I, I did stay uh, to the end of the concert. That's funny that you asked me that. Let's talk a little bit more about 91. Obviously, you're you're brought over. You're acclimating. You got Kenny Reggett, uh, you know, there. Paul Coffey goes down, and, and your role increases greatly in the playoffs. Uh, and you end up having a playoff run that's arguably one of the best in NHL history. Tell me about that that load on your shoulders and how you were able uh, to provide and and you know be that leader and step up. Well, yeah, cough did go down, so we were that's you know, that was one less guy on uh, for the power play. But I, I mean, it was just personally, it was it's always when you lose a guy, it's 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 by committee and that and everybody else even picks up the slack, so to speak. Everybody takes on more ice time, and it, as a group, you. You, you, you deal with it. And that's exactly what we did with uh, in terms of when cough went down. So um, it was, just, it spoke to the depth we had uh, on this team in, in all positions, uh, even though you, as they see you as a defenseman, I mean, even, you know, even forwards can have an impact on, on, on filling that hole. So we, we just, it was, it spoke to the depth we had in the team and we charged on uh, that, uh, that season and in, into the playoffs, uh, so it was, it, it's just, you just never know. Like you go in uh, uh, to the playoffs and, and you just, you're going to, you're going to run into hurdles along the way. And that was one. And that's, that's one that we overcame. Yeah, no question about it. You're watching the Ken Reagan Friends Show, of course, brought to you by 31 Sports Bar and Grill. You see the Reggae jersey right behind Ken. Get out there. 
have yourself a cold beer. We got all kinds of good stuff coming up. Hockey playoffs are around the corner. March Madness, naturally. So we're excited about all those things. We're talking with former Penns Hall of Fame defenseman Larry Murphy. And Larry, we've had the luxury of having some incredible stories recently. Not to put you on the spot. We had Wendell Young in the last episode. And he's talking about how Scotty Bowman had him and uh, Kenny and uh, Tommy and some other guys rotating like 11 goalies in one game um, and, and how Kenny fell over the bench as he's running back off the ice. So I just got to ask you both. I mean, do you have something that, that sticks out, uh, you know, something like that that not, not necessarily is on the ice when you talk about stories from those teams? Well, you know, if you're talking about Scotty in particular, there's there's plenty. There's there's usually one story a day concerning Scotty. Uh, just uh, as, as we all know, a very colorful character. The one the one thing I remember is uh, we were in the playoffs, and I can't remember um, the national anthem singer. It was a, uh, I think it was an Irish guy. I should know him. He's, he sung there for for years. Uh, Scotty and I, and I don't know how he in his mind he felt that the national anthem needed to be sung in a certain, I don't know how he comes up with a time. He wanted, he figured it's got to be a fast pace, get the crowd into it. He doesn't want it drawn out. So he was having issues with the length of time it took for the American national anthem to be sung. And one game he sat, I, I didn't know that this was going on. And I was on the bench to start of the game and Scotty's got a stopwatch. And as, and as soon as he starts singing, Scotty hits the watch. I mean, we're, we've got a game to play. And, and anyways, it turns out that, uh, he went over whatever this time it was, Scotty, and and <laughs> Scotty was on the bench, and Barry was the assistant coach, and he's Scotty's yelling at Barry, Barry, I told him, I told him you're supposed to sing it in this time, and then the, you know the pucks dropped, the game started, and Scotty's still upset about the national anthem singer, but that that was Scotty for you. There was just the wildest stuff, and I know I'm sure Kenny on this show has just shared his uh, his experiences with. Uh, with Scotty Bowman, but never, never a dull moment. A, a guy that uh, lived and breathed hockey he's still, I mean, he's, he's, he, I mean, what, Scotty's got to be in his mid eighties. He still goes, he lives in Tampa now, goes to every game, lightning game. I mean, he's just a, a diehard hockey fan, I guess you would say. Kenny, jump in. No, was, uh, yeah, that's right about Scotty. And, and uh, trust me, I don't have the stories that uh, Larry and them guys do from the 91 Cup. I came uh, at the 92 point, and I got a few Scotty stories, and that was after Bob Johnson. And uh, Scott, Scotty, Scotty's a guy that he lived, eat, and breathed hockey. Hockey was his system, yeah. hockey, like Larry says. And, and there's very, very few people that, that dedicate themselves, and uh, it's just – it's like a disease in their bodies. It's, it's, yeah. it's hockey, hockey, it's hockey. <laughs> and, and National Anthem will make a difference in the big scheme of things because that's how yeah, things are perceived and it makes sense in people's minds. But, uh, yeah, Scott, Scotty, uh, yeah, as we'll go along in the show, you'll, you'll hear some different stories about what a, what a truly wonderful, dedicated uh, oh, yeah. you know, person he was to the game, to the institute of the game. And uh, it's it, we're we're very lucky to have the opportunity to play with him. To be honest yeah, with I, I mean, I also I was fortunate when I was in Detroit. I had Scotty Bowman, and there was there. I thought his his greatest strengths was, and it, it speaks to what Kenny was just saying was he he knew players in the league better than anybody, and the reason why because he would he would watch. I'm sure he'd watch three games a night uh, around the league. He, he would, he was so well versed in, in, in the opposition. I thought in terms of, you know, team preparation, there was no, there, he was second to none in that area just because he knew what he knew what you're up against. And he could speak about a player and he could say, you know, speak to their strength or weaknesses. He, he was, he, it was, a, it was, it, it was a fact that I've, I have never met anybody uh, when he was in, um, in Detroit coaching. And that was the same in Pittsburgh. I mean, the access to the, st the satellite dish, wasn't that everybody's home? They had a big dish at the arenas, and he would spend. Uh, it was almost like he spent overnight watching as many games as he could, and and that was a guy that. Uh, uh, and he's still today. He's still. Uh, I, I I saw him a while ago. He's still well versed in the league, and he's in his mid eighties. He looks great, and he's still as passionate today as he was. I'm sure when he was a five year old boy watching his Montreal Canadiens, because you know he grew up in in Montreal. Joey Mullen told us a great story a few weeks back about, um, I can't remember exactly what it was called, but this hospitality suite 
uh, or, or that he used to host or he'd have some guys over late nights just to hang out, play some cards, maybe have a couple of cold ones. Uh, and Scotty, you know, was asking why he kept the players up late all night. And eventually Scotty joined in and had a beer and was like, all right, I, I get it. This is kind of cool. Do you remember that that sweet he had? Did you take partake in any of that? No, I, I'd be in bed. I wouldn't have nothing to do with that. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, it's uh, I, I can't speak to that uh, that uh, moment in, in particular, but I'm, I'm not I'm not so surprised to say the least. But yeah. Yeah, uh, Scott, I ask, you know, there's not there's a, there's a, as I said, there's a story every day uh, about Scotty Bowman. I mean, this the things that and and you know, little small things and 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 big huge things that he'd get himself uh, right in the thick of things. Larry, you're a four-time Stanley Cup champion, back-to-back with the Pens, back-to-back with the Red Wings. When you look back at things, obviously, you're, I'm assuming you're still in Detroit. Uh, I know you work some local TV there. But, uh, you know, when you reflect kind of on all of that, how fortunate do you feel and, and what are just some emotions that you have? Well, you know, referring to my, uh, my time in, in Pittsburgh, it was – it was. I mean, I'd spent uh, – I don't know how many years I was into my career, uh, probably 10, 11 – 12 years and, and never really, you know, got a sniff at, at the Stanley cup. And then I come, I come to Pittsburgh and at the time, I mean, the t- uh, Craig Patrick, of course, uh, you know, did a wonderful job, you know, building the team and made some, made some great trades and, and really pre- uh, prepared the lineup for that playoffs that year. It was finally like all of a sudden, uh, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm in the hunt for the Stanley cup and, and, you know, you, after, you know, like, as I said, 11, 12 years, you don't know if you're ever going to get a sniff at it. And then all of a sudden, boom, I'm there. But the intro, like uh, just a side story for that, going to going to Pittsburgh, I'm traded from Minnesota. And it turns out that uh, we're playing Minnesota in the cup finals that year. Team that just came back. So I, you know, I've i got uh, double motivation for that one. And you always want to beat your, your previous team. And, of course, you want to win the, the Stanley Cup. So it's just it's one phone call, boy, just puts you on a different trajectory and, and uh, cherish my time in Pittsburgh. I, I cherished my time with Bob Johnson. Uh, what a, a tremendous man he was, uh, um, you know, tr- the players I got to play with. It was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we had, you know, everybody was all business. I mean, it was all about winning, but I mean, Kenny can attest to that. I mean, we, there, we had a lot of laughs. That's, that's for sure. Along the way, there was never a shortage of, of, ha- of uh, enjoying yourself. And, and we had that great mix of, of, uh, Knowing, uh, you know, what you do to be the best player you can be, but at the same time, you know, just, ha- just having as much fun. And then that's a way to deal with the pressure is just, a, it's a relief uh, if you can laugh about something else that uh, you, you don't get, you don't get bogged down with it. So a great mix, a great group of guys and always very fortunate, uh, you know, that I ended up in Pittsburgh. Kenny, when are you going to call Larry and say, hey, come out to the bar uh, you know, free appetizers on me. Yeah, yeah I want. Yeah, I want to hear. Yeah, I want, what is it? Do we have? Do we have draft beer? Uh. <laughs> we 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 got everything you would need, Murph. We're yeah. looking forward to. You. We're waiting for. We set this place up for you. Yeah, well, you. I mean, Kenny, you know me as well as anybody. So, I mean, I I I I, I feel very confident that uh, if if, you, if you're I've really get over there. there. Yeah, if you're ever in town, please stop by, and uh, we'll keep in good touch. We we do as it is, but uh, we'll keep in touch. And uh, I'm glad to see you're doing well, and really appreciate talking to you and you helping us out today. Hey, Kenny, any, you know what? When I I, I found out uh, uh, that you were doing you were doing this, and uh, I can't remember who told me about it, but I was I was looking for I was hoping you'd give me the call, so I was looking forward to to yeah. to reminiscing and and you know. Uh, it's gonna and we'll, we'll always cross paths someday. Yeah, you know? this is funny right. how it works. You know, guys you play with. I mean, you can speak to that. You know, I run into different guys at uh, you know, the different points of your career. You just for whatever reason you cross paths, and, and it's just like yeah. you just want to give them a big hug. And yeah, oh man, oh, those are great times. I, and I'm so happy to see you. I, I heard a famous quote uh, a while ago, and there was one from Gordy Howe. And Gordy Howe said, "If you if you retire from the game of hockey, and have as many friends as you do as fingers on your one hand, you've had a good career, and uh, you fit that mold for me, Larry. Thank you." Oh uh, yeah, can we? Yeah, it was it was uh, it was a good time, boy. Yeah, not going to ask you to hold up your fingers, uh, but <laughs> 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 no. Listen, you guys had fun. Uh, obviously, a ton of great memories and accomplishments. 
We like to have some fun on this show too. So Larry Murphy, I think we accomplished that today. Thank you so much for joining us, man. And I'm sure Kenny uh, feels the same. Yeah, Mike. Hey, good, good seeing you guys. And uh, yep, I'm look, I'm looking forward to that that free uh, or at least half price draft beer. <laughs> <laughs> Show you why the latest stories in unbeatable podcast with your favorite.